After the Persian Wars of the early 5th century BCE, Athens stood at the head of the Delian League, vowing to protect the Greek world against the tyranny of the Achaemenid Empire. However, the Spartans would challenge Athenian hegemony in the First Peloponnesian War of 460-445 BC. And without a decisive result on this war, Athenian hegemony was in jeopardy. But it is precisely at this point that a golden age dawns in Athens. Perhaps the most influential Athenian of the time was Pericles, who held the seat of power from 445 to 429 BC when he died. Athens, being a democracy, saw this influential figure win election after election. Pericles oversaw the construction of the Great Parthenon as well as many works of beautification all across Athens, all the while keeping the Persians far from the Greek mainland and in the later stages of his life, staving off the Spartans. It's the works built under Pericles that we usually associate with classical Athens. He truly made Athens the city of cultural excellence. However, Pericles' policies divided his nation. Plutarch quotes a Greek of the time who rose up against Pericles' use of Delian League funds for purposes other than war. He says, Greece cannot but resent it as an insufferable affront and consider herself to be tyrannized over openly, when she sees the treasure, which was contributed by her upon a necessity for the war, wantonly lavished out by us upon our city, to gild her all over, and to adorn and set her forth as it were some vain woman, hung round with precious stones and figures and temples, which cost a world of money. These are not mere echoes of political hit pieces against Pericles, as it was usual for the time. Athenian accounting shows that most of the funds for the construction of the new temple of the Parthenon came from the Athenian workers that received yearly allied contributions. The embezzlement of these funds to Athenian designs was done without allied consent and fiercely defended by Pericles himself, who argued the following. So long as Athens maintained the Allies' defense and kept off the barbarians from attacking them, while in the meantime they did not so much as supply one horse, man or ship, but only found money for the service. The Allied funds being spent on public works soared the number of Athenians in favor of expanding Athenian dominance over the Delian League. Pericles began paying juries that would serve in public courthouses, as well as other civil democratic duties. The constant stream of public works was also increasing the amount of craftsmen being paid off by the state. The connection between state, democracy and hegemony over the Greek cities was stronger than ever. The rest of Greece began seeing Athens with distrust. But as this sentiment grew, the Athenians looked the other way. Eventually, this distrust, revolt and disgust at Athenian corruption and imperialism bubbled into the Second Peloponnesian War in 431 BC. Pericles entrenched the Athenians behind their walls, but he eventually succumbed to disease in 429 BC. During a respite from the war in 415 BC, the Athenians did not correct their imperialist ways. This is shown by their siege of the city of Melos. Athenian diplomats approached the city trying to persuade their oligarchs to join the Delian League. Thucydides writes how the Athenian diplomats state that they could not tolerate the neutrality of Melos as it made Athens look weak, especially as Melos is such a small island. Cousins of the Spartans, the people of Melos refused and were besieged until they eventually surrendered. The Athenians murdered all men, took women and children as slaves and sent 500 colonists to the island. As Thucydides puts it, the strong do what they can and the weak suffer what they must. During that same year, the Athenian people were persuaded by a prominent Athenian statesman, Alcibiades, to send an expedition to Sicily that eventually ended in disaster. However, some of the Athenians managed to save their lives by singing Athenian theatre rhymes and other forms of famous Athenian plays. It goes to show just how far the reach of Athenian culture went during this period. In 413 BCE, the Second Peloponnesian War resumed, and it would be the bane of Athenian hegemony. In 404 BCE, their golden age had fully crumbled into rubble, much like the walls of their city at the hands of their rivals, the Spartans. If you want to know more about the Greek cities, you know, for instance, Sparta, there are these videos here, maybe with a little bit lower quality, but these videos on the screen right now, or if you want something else, 
you can, of course, choose one of these other videos. I've been Wolf, stay wonderful, and I'll see you next time.